But anyway, the other match that is announced so far in the SummerSlam early predictions and thoughts, kind of. We'll probably do another one in a couple of weeks' time when there are more matches, and I would expect maybe six or seven. Yeah, I think we'll probably have another Hart Dynasty Uso match, probably a Ziggler Kofi match, uh, probably an Eve Alicia match. I mean, you can see the card already. It's going to be the same bloody thing as it was for Money in the Bank, really. Um, slight differences here or there, but uh, yeah, we'll predict that when it happens. That's right. So we had uh, an incredible match announced at the end of Raw when Nexus were in the ring. And of course, John Cena came out to make a bit of a proposal to those guys. And indeed, when they turned it down, in fact, when Cena turned down that opportunity, and indeed Cena in turn uh, was comfortable enough at that point to announce that he had been quietly putting together a team now the team is interesting mixed between uh, heels and baby faces in there we got uh, cena edge morrison or truth the great Kali, chris jericho and uh who else i think uh, that's bret hart wasn't it right yeah it's a funny mix actually um i do remember uh watching Raw and as the entrance music or the entrance themes for different people who come along I was like oh yeah that's cool Edge that's pretty unique and but there was a few there that I mean Jesus Christ I mean come on Or truth is getting a massive uh, push at least in the sense that he's on these pay-per-views time after time and I think they probably wanted him on the last one they took him out at the last minute replaced him with Mark Henry I think was it uh, I can't even remember back only a few days ago but it is uh, interesting that a guy like him would be pushed over MVP yeah this is it and now Mark Henry as well I think is part of this uh, team Cena with uh Kali and um Ortrude. I mean has it gotten to that stage where that's the kind of uh I mean you got you gotta think if there was the old school survivor series five on five some of those teams would be awful at this stage. But um a funny a funny one I think this uh Nexus versus whatever Team Cena is gonna be called or if it's just Team Cena. Um I mean, it doesn't excite me in the slightest. And it also just hogs half the bloody roster for SummerSlam. So on the bright side, I think some people will get to shine and there'll be more singles matches and whatnot. But uh, a waste for some of those guys to be in there, especially uh, your edges and whatnot. Just to, And I'm sure they're feeling the same way. <laughs> Yeah, I believe Edge and Jericho could have had a fantastic program. They even kind of followed it up this week when uh, you had Edge calling out Jericho after that triple threat match on Raw and basically he said that they've been going at it like this for far too long and that it was time to settle the score if you like why were they swerving us in a show where they were gonna bring those guys out in a team I just don't understand the logic behind that but they were at least working hard to surprise us within a two hour period and maybe it's got to be said that that's good I mean this week's Raw was almost like they decided let's ignore the guys in creative who want the showbiz and the general managers and the, the TNA really and what they replaced that with quality matches uh, good promos stuff backstage exactly what we're looking for yeah I think the whole show from start to finish bar probably the comedy element with Santino and whatnot which was probably just to break it up a little bit and I'm sure give them their TV time but that aside, I think the whole the whole show was actually probably the best Raw this year, hands down. And that opening match uh, was off the charts for a, a main event to, to open it like that. With so many false finishes, it just really kind of set the the pace for the whole show. And it was refreshing. It was good. And you got to wonder, I mean, no guest hosts to be seen. And uh, look what they can do when, when you don't have to put up with that stuff. I think it takes so much away from the show with this guest host concept that uh, they've kind of lost the run of what they're best at sometimes and definitely we saw it this week with uh, the lack of guest host. Of course Bret Hart coming out as another member of Team Cena 
was a surprise. I knew Brett was coming back. We talked about it. He wasn't going to be gone forever. Seemed quite happy to do stuff with the company. And certainly no hard feelings. But interesting after that Marta Hart case has been in the news that indeed Brett... He's uh, not on that score, really. He is happy to work. And indeed, to see Wade Barrett looking down on Brett and that team of baby faces, you got to think that Wade Barrett was really excited. And indeed, that has to be, again, I think, like Seamus, he's had moments of his career every single night. Uh, I'm sure he's always tried to kind of aspire to workers like Brett and, you know, Chris Jericho, who he beat down for some reason. Yeah, really stepping up on the... On the nexus side and keeping it <clears throat> in the family and uh yeah barry not having any of jericho he's, he's sticking with his boys which is good because um they need to uh really maintain that kind of uh nexus gimmick uh, constantly or otherwise it just wouldn't be as legit as it is at the moment great nexus t-shirts and i don't know if they're for sale are they actually i think i saw an ad on uh on Raw for the, it was one of the American I think it was probably from the USA Network or whatever but they had a WWE shop zone or whatever the fuck you call that thing advertising the the, the Nexus shirt but uh, it would be quite funny if uh, especially when they're all lined up if you turn that end the other way sometimes and uh, some of the promos from some of those guys can be a bit on the coach sleep side but um yeah, I think we should we should get some Nexus shirts. That'd be kind of cool. Your Nexus are against us, and I'm starting to think that that is the way of things in WWE, at least until SummerSlam. Are they going to just discard it after SummerSlam? Will Nexus be disbanded? Is it just for that big pay-per-view, and then they've had that few months of TV? I suppose we're going to have to wait and see. But as regards other matches that could happen, I would expect Ted DiBiase to be in some kind of match. Now, on Raw, he seemed to be in a program with Mar- Morrison. Of course, Morrison is taken up right now uh, with that team seen a match. So where's Ted going to fit in? Where is... Uh, who else? I mean, who are we missing off that card that would typically be there? I suppose Drew McIntyre. I want to see him in something. And Kofi Kingston as well. Yeah, I'm sure Kofi will uh, be in the mix there with the title. Uh, possibly with Drew, possibly with Dolph. Um, it's hard to, to say with who at this stage but you're right about Ted he needs to be up there he definitely needs to be on that card <coughs> even if he was putting a beat down on our truth but again now our truth is uh, caught up in this mad team Cena buzz so um, who else is on Raw that is Evan Bourne on uh, indeed on the Raw one yeah on the team he's not on the team but he remains to get a place yeah maybe Evan Bourne and Ted might uh, do something but you do have to wonder as well, like, with the uh, Seamus Orton match, I think if the Miz was to cash in at any stage or if he was to go on for some sort of feud, Miz or Orton or Miz and Seamus, which would be funnier? I think Miz and Seamus. Miz and Seamus, I mean, that would be really saying these guys are ready, wouldn't it? Yeah. It would be just funny for Miz's. Uh, promos, I think, with Seamus, and even he was doing a little bit of piss taking on Monday night, wasn't he? With uh, yeah, a very, very, very poor Irish accent out of the Miz, but uh, I think there's a bit of juice in that one to last a couple of weeks of TV and be a lot more entertaining than I think the Miz and Orton uh, having a few because you know. It's quite hard to take the piss out of Orton, where it's quite easy to take the piss out of Seamus, isn't it? Uh, It's amazing how well it worked, isn't it? The Miz and Seamus thing was really good, and uh, I'm just surprised over and over how the Miz just seems to keep getting better and better. And I think the skills on the mic really shine, and also the in-ring work is just just getting better every time. But that is, uh, in a nutshell, some of our thoughts on SummerSlam 2010. That pay-per-view coming up in a few weeks' time. And they really haven't got that much time to build more feuds. Like you say, Drew and Kofi probably looking to be on there. 
maybe a women's match as well i'd say women's championship maybe we're going to see the end of lay cool uh in terms of them having two title belts which is ridiculous one is uh you know all you need and i think two of those belts means that you might as well have just decommissioned that 